YouTube, what's good with y'all, man? In my last video, I asked y'all if y'all wanted to see an in-depth video on how to structure and arrange beats. Y'all left a few comments, so that's what we're doing today, man. Let's get right into it. All right, so like I said in my previous video, structuring is one of the most important parts of making a beat, man. So that's why I'm making a whole video about it. You can also make beats sound really unique by structuring it in a, in a certain way, but for me, it's just to keep the artist listening to my beat, man. That's that's why it's so important to me. All right, so as you can see, I already laid down the, the melody and the drums, I already mixed everything, so I'm not gonna get too in depth into into that today. But of course, what I'm gonna do today is uh, structure everything out. So I'm gonna start out structuring the melody, and then I'm gonna structure out the drums under uh, under the melody. So for now, I'm gonna just call this pattern drums. Uh, take that out so we can uh, focus on the melody itself and that's how it usually goes for me making beats i usually start out structuring out the melody and uh, then later on put some drums under it so for this melody i started out with the piano right here i'm gonna play it real quick That's probably the most important melody of this whole sample. Uh, what I also did is I made it unique and I pitched these uh, top notes up an octave. So it's a bit like higher pitched. Like that. And uh, that's a good tip for y'all uh, for structuring too, is make your melodies unique and just making them sound a little bit different. So you can uh, switch between the two throughout the, the beat. And that's a melody from Electra X right here. So we got the piano and then we got this uh, melody that I added on, kind of a counter melody. That's what that sounds like. Myself. And that's basically just a pad or a counter melody, so that's uh, good to keep in mind. Next, I got these vocal chops, uh, which I added to it as well, so like this. All right, so next, I added this uh, sub bass to it. So that's just basically to add some low into the sample. Then lastly, I uh, went to my drum kit right here, got the tubular bell, like always, put some delay and some reverb on it. That's what that sounds like. Basically just a, a low accent that comes in after every eight bars. And that means we have five melodies that we got to deal with. We got the piano, so that's one. Then we got this little pad, that's two. These vocal chops, that's three. Uh, the sub bass four and then the tubular bell that's five so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drag this all to the left right here and i'm gonna copy it over a bunch of times so we got uh plenty like space or patterns to, to work with all right so when we have all of that laid down i usually go for uh, the following structuring i usually start out with an eight bar intro right here or a 16 bar intro i'm gonna get uh, more in depth into into that later after the intro i usually go for a 16 bar hook right here then a 16 bar verse and then an eight bar bridge right here and that structuring right there is basically the structuring of 90 percent of the the rap songs you hear on spotify and apple music Man. All right, so like I said, I usually start with an eight bar or 16 bar intro. Uh, it really depends on uh, what kind of melody you have and what kind of bounce you want to go for. And of course, how long you want the intro to be uh, before the drums come in. So for this beat right here, I'm gonna go with eight bars. Otherwise the drums will come in after 24 seconds. And for hard beats, I think that's too long. With emotional beats on the other hand, bro, I've heard intros of like 50 seconds, man. So it really depends on what genre you're you're uh, making, of course. So let's say you have a sub bass in your melody like this one, and you want that to come in in the, in the intro, I would make it 60. Uh, so instead of the sub bass coming right in when the beat starts, I'm gonna have it come in uh, after the next eight bars. But like I said, I'm gonna have an eight bar intro, so I'm gonna take that out and take the sub bass uh, out as well. Of course, we can't have both pianos playing in the intro, so what I usually do is I uh, focus on one sound at a time. So we got the intro right here, then I know we're gonna have a 16 bar hook right here, and then copy that straight over to a 16 bar verse and then uh, the eight bar bridge right here. All right, so since we have two piano melodies right here, two unique melodies, we can basically just switch between the two throughout the whole beat. So pattern two right here is with the high notes and this is with the low notes. So what I'm gonna do for the intro is just start out with the, the basic melody with the low the low notes right here. Uh, so then we have a 16 bar hook right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out with the piano as well, uh, the same piano we had in the, in the intro. And then for the second part of the hook, I'm gonna switch it up to make it sound a bit more unique. Keep the artist, of course, like interested in the beat. So for the second part of the hook, I'm gonna have these uh, high notes playing just to kind of keep the listener interested like i said and um yeah just to kind of switch it up a little bit next we have a 16 bar verse right here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do the exact same thing uh go for the low notes right here and go for the high notes here just to kind of switch between uh, the two throughout the whole beat now lastly for the piano got the a bar bridge right here 
Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it again. So we're basically just switching between these two melodies uh, throughout the whole beat. All right, so next we got these four melodies to worry about. We got the tubular bell, sub bass, this pad, and the vocals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the, the easiest melody. That's the tubular bell, because it's only one note. And I want that tubular bell to come in when the drums come in. So to get that out of the way, I'm gonna just copy that over like this, since it's only hitting on the first part of every eight bars. So basically just to get that out of the way. So next, once again, go for the easiest melody. We got the sub bass right here, uh, and that's not playing in the hook or the verse, since there's an 808 in the hook in the verse, and that will clash a lot. And I also don't want this sub bass to play in the intro, like I said before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it over to the bridge, since there are no drums uh, in the bridge. So now we're left with two other melodies. We got this pad right here, and these vocal chops. And now it's basically just a matter of playing around and just finding out what sounds best to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these vocals in the intro right here. To basically get the listener's attention since uh, only the piano will be kind of boring. And I'm going to also add these vocals in the second part of the hook. Uh, since the listener already heard them before and then they uh, kind of fade out in the first part of the hook. So in the second part of the hook, I'm going to bring them back in. But I'm going to leave the vocals out in this verse right here. Since that's usually the part where the least amount of drums uh, and melodies playing. For the people who don't know what the difference between a hook and a verse is, the hook is usually the most like catchy part of a song and it also repeats a couple times throughout the whole song and a verse is basically a part of a song where uh, an artist basically wants to talk some sh and that's why you want to keep these verses as open as possible uh, so you don't want to have 20 melodies and 20 drum sounds playing otherwise of course there will be no room right here for an artist to, to go crazy on some lyrics all right so i hope that's all clear now so what i'm gonna do for these vocals though is i'm gonna copy them over to the bridge too to kind of make the listener know that okay we're out of the verse now since a lot of melodies are playing again and of course to get the artist ready uh, to get back into a hook which we're going to copy over later all right so now we're only left with this Electra X melody. And what I'm gonna do with that is I don't want it to play in the intro or the hook, otherwise it would get very busy. And since we don't have any melodies playing here besides the piano and the tubular bell, I'm gonna just put that Electra X melody right here at the second part of the verse to kind of build up some tension for uh, for this uh, bridge right here. All right, so we can get rid of all of this right here. And now we're gonna see um, how long this is right here. So we're at one minute and 50 seconds. So instead of copying everything over a bunch of times now, I'm gonna add some drums under it, kind of structure this out a little bit and then uh, see how long we wanna make this beat. And since we're basically just gonna copy this part over a bunch of times and it will be the exact same thing every single time, I'm gonna just wait with that to to, to keep things clear. All right, so I'm gonna get into the structuring of the drums now. And I put these little markers here for the people who, uh, who are having trouble remembering. All right, so for the drums right here, we got a crash, 808, hi-hat, snare, open hat, uh, another snare, and then one perk I added. And all the drums together sound like this. So yeah, like I said before, I'm not going to get too in-depth with uh, the drums themselves. Uh, and I'm going to give y'all some sauce now, man. All right, so since all of these melodies right here have a lot of low end in them, especially the, the piano and this 808 in the drums has a lot of low end in it as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the mixer and select every single melodic uh, mixer track we have. And I'm going to go to an empty mixer track. So insert 15 right here. While having all the melodies selected, I'm going to right click this arrow right here and go to uh, route to this track only. I'm going to call this melody bus real quick. So now all the melodies will play on, uh, on this track right here as well as every single individual track of each melody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to this bus right here, and I'm going to open up an EQ and cut out some lows. So now there's actually room for the 808. And the reason why I don't put EQs cutting out the lows on every instrument is because, for example, in the intro or a bridge, you want there to be low end in the melody. Because if you cut out all the low end of the piano, like the whole emotion of the piano will get cut out. Same with the vocals. So for the intro and the bridge, I always keep the low end in my melody. Uh, but in the hook and the verse, you want the low end cut out so you can make room for the 808. And that's why I like to put an EQ on a bus right here and create an automation clip. So now we can uh, basically just drag this out a little bit. Just create these little shapes, these little boxes. So next, what I usually do is right here, the EQ is not affecting the melody. So there's low end in the melody. Next right here, it is affecting the melody. So now you have room for the 808. So in the intro, I want there to be low end in the melody. So the EQ is not active right here. Next in the hook, I want it to be active as well as in the verse. Now, like I said before, in the bridge, I'm gonna have the EQ off. So there's uh, low end right here. So yeah, I'm gonna put that on top of all the melodies real quick just to get that out the way. Uh, and let's focus on the drums now. So for the purpose of this video, I laid down the melody and the drums uh, before structuring everything out. But what I usually do is I'll lay down a sample right here and then put some drums under it so you can really get a feeling of if the drums are matching the sample or not. So let's say I'm making a beat for non-video purposes. I would just put an empty uh, pattern down right here. Just uh, create this little like selection and just lay down drums this way, which y'all see me do in videos all the time as well. And laying down drums like this is just way better uh, compared to just having an eight bar loop, just looping over and over. So you can get no feeling of what the whole beat sounds like. All right, so of course I already laid down some drums. So let's start out with uh, the crash, which is the, the easiest part of the drums. 
uh, like I said before, I'm gonna copy that over the same as the tubal bell just to get that out the way. All right, so now we're left with six patterns right here. I'm gonna move these down a little bit since uh, these patterns right here, the 808, the high end, and the snare are of course the most important. Now these three right here are of course percussion, so they're not as important as uh, these three right here. So I'm gonna focus on these three first. So I'm gonna just copy them over three more times uh, like this. And you can basically keep this part because of course you have an 808 and high end and a snare playing throughout uh, the hook and a verse most of the time. So we're just gonna leave that as is. So next we got an open hat, counter snare, and a perk. And of course, like I said before, you want to keep uh, this verse as open as possible. So we don't want these three samples to play in a verse, of course. Otherwise, we'll get very busy. So what I usually do is I'm going to just copy it over like this. Uh, I focus on one thing at a time. So for the open hat, I usually want it to play throughout the whole hook or to uh, let it come in after the after the first eight bars. But for this beat, I'm going to have it come in at the first part of the hook uh, as well as the second part and the first part of the verse. So I'm going to take these out right here. All right, so next for the snare right here, I don't want the snare to be in a verse because uh, I want to leave some space for the artist, like I said before. But also don't want it to just play throughout the whole hook. Otherwise, it would get very static and very like similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this first part out and only leave this little snare roll right here. So in the first eight bars of the hook we got no counter snares but only the snare roll and then the second part we uh, do have some uh, counter snares as well as the snare roll and for the last percussion right here i'm gonna take that out in the first as well to leave some space and also take that out in the first eight bars of the hook and the reason i left it out right here as well is basically to just build up some tension like the song just started right here so i don't want everything to already play if that makes sense and of course to keep the listener interested man because if you would have all the drums and all the melodies playing at the beginning of of the whole beat of the whole song like the the artist and the listener would have already like heard all of the melodies and all of the sounds in the beat and that's why it's important to spread things out like for example this melody only comes in after 50 seconds and this perk right here only comes in once throughout the whole beat a small little tweaks like that just really keeps the listener interested all right so now that we got a good foundation laid down what i like to do is just cut some hi-hats out or cut some 808s out at certain parts to kind of make it sound a bit more interesting for example on the hi-hat right here you could basically just cut this little part out and we'll just hit your ear a little bit different compared to just having the hi-hat plate throughout the whole beat so what that sounds like And that's just one of many things you can do. So for example, you could cut the hi-hats out right here, or you could just make the hi-hats come in a bit late right here, or cut them up right here. You could just basically experiment with that and it will sound different on every single beat. And that's only the hi-hats. So for example, you could cut out a snare right here to kind of build up some tension for the for the second part of the hook, or just leave the 808 out right here so it hits harder right here. And all these little cuts and tweaks right here, uh, you just gotta practice, man, because it will sound different in every single beat. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this up like I usually would, and then deconstruct it. All right, so I made some cuts real quick. What I did is at the first part of the hook i cut the hi-hats out to kind of make this part right here uh just hit a little bit harder to kind of create some tension like this and next i made this cut right here which i explained before then for the first right here i kind of delayed these hi-hats a little bit made the same cut right here uh and of course cut out the 808 halfway so that sounds like this And then we get into the last part of the verse where I cut the 808 and I hi-hat out at the, at the last part to kind of make space for the for the bridge right here. But now, of course, we got a beat that's 1 minute 15 and that's way too short, man. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select this all right here and just copy it over using Control or uh, Command B. So now we got another hook right here. And after the 16 bar hook, we got another verse right here. So now we got a 16 bar hook and a 16 bar verse again. But I left this bridge out since we're at 2 minute and 5 seconds right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off. Uh, but what you could do is you could just copy this over one more time. It really depends on how long you want your beat to be. But for me, I usually aim for a uh, two minute 30 max. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and probably instead of adding like an outro with no drums, I'm going to just uh, keep that bridge out and just let the hook come, uh, come back in one more time. So you can most definitely like leave a little melody playing right here and just have it fade out without drums. Uh, but in my experience, I think it's harder to, to like let the drums and the melodies come in one more time without the artist like rapping over it. And that's basically it for the structure and for the drums, man. So what you could do is at the last like uh, eight bars right here, you could automate the, the master channel and just have it fade out. Um, but that's just personal preference, man. And the last step we could do is you could add some, uh, some transitions or some, uh, some rises to it. Like that one. 
but that's just personal preference, man. Like I know a lot of people who like to add crazy sound effects and risers to their beats. And I know a lot of people who don't add anything to beats, man. So it's up to you. All right, so that's how you arrange beats, man. I hope y'all learned something from the video. Like always, make sure to let me know in the comments what videos y'all trying to see next. Also, I really want to thank y'all for 6K subs on the channel, man. So don't forget to subscribe, like the video, follow me on Instagram, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna catch y'all on the next video, man. Y'all stay safe.